Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about route planning and navigation. It is a fundamental skill of driving and unfortunately for those of you who have taken driver education, whether that is with a passenger vehicle or as a CDL driver, unfortunately it's one of those things that doesn't get taught to new drivers and often new drivers are left trying to figure it out for themselves about how to route plan and navigation. Now I will tell you that route planning and navigation is a lot easier now with GPS, our phones, GPS is in our phones and Google Maps than when I learned how to do it uh, in the 1990s. Um, all we had was a map book. So tonight Dave is here, Ashimer is here, uh, Verk is here, and don't use her name is here. <laughs> Had to tune in. Either don't use her name. Uh, excellent. So everybody's here. And yes, it is a good topic. And I've had requests from smart drivers to get this up. So I'm going to do the live stream on it tonight. And then I'm going to do a more intensive, you know, condensed video uh, for this because I'm going to include this topic into the defensive driving course that I'm currently working like mad to get finished and get up for you there and get that available on the website and when I do get that up and get that on the avail available on the website what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer it free for a few people to have a look at and maybe just give me some feedback on the course and uh, just ask you for a testimonial just so I can get that going and get all the bugs worked out of it and that and whatnot. Tommy's here how are you Tommy? So it's great that everybody's here. So uh, yeah, Matt's here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. GPS is a is a nice thing, Matt. I have to say, I went back uh, a couple of years ago driving truck, and uh, they did have a GPS in the truck, which was a specific uh, tr GPS for CDL drivers. Uh, it warned you of uh, low overhead obstructions and those types of things, which is uh, really good and. Uh, but the GPS in the truck broke and I ended up uh, using the one on my phone and even the one on my phone worked really well. So uh, that was that was really good. Thanks, Corey, for letting me know about that. That's great. Yes, and the Olympics are on. The Olympics are really great. So uh, yeah, you guys probably know more about the Olympics than I do. I've been incredibly busy here trying to get stuff going and that and whatnot. So and, to and Tommy's good, that's great. Okay, so uh, if anybody has any questions about uh, passing a road test, uh, doing their CDL license, ask me anything about licensing, and I'll be more than happy to help you out with that as well uh, as the route planning and navigation presentation that I put together for you. Uh, I see. <laughs> Went drifting. <laughs> that's not good, I see. Uh, that's not good. Uh, yeah. Um, Drifting is probably something you should learn in a closed circuit area, like on a racetrack or something like that. <laughs> you did see the movie Fast and the Furious, uh, Tokyo Drift, right? <laughs> uh, don't use her name. Uh, Garmin has overheight warnings. It's one of the best. Yes, that is a great recommendation there. Uh, I haven't got into actually owning a GPS yet. I just use my phone and Google Maps, and I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Uh, Sarah's here going for a driver's license on February 26th. And you are most welcome, Sarah. If you have any questions at all, drop me a note tonight here in the comments or drop me an email, rick at Smart Drive Test. For those of you who are new to Smart Drive Test and haven't been here before, uh, Smart Drive Test helps new drivers get a license regardless of class, whether that's truck, bus, or car. And as well, we help CD, CDL drivers start a career as a truck or bus driver. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button as well. Hit the thumbs up button if you like uh, what you see here. And for those of you watching on the replay as well, uh, hit the thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and definitely leave us a comment. All of that helps out to improve the channel and certainly uh, supports what we're doing here on Smart Drive Test to help everybody. Uh, Rob, good evening. How are you? How do you, Ashmer, how do you park perfectly straight? Uh, what kind, Ashmer, what kind of parking are you talking about? Are you talking about parking along a curb? Are you talking about parallel parking? What kind of parking are you talking about, Ashmer? Just let me know that. Uh, don't use your name. What kind of services are you talking about in the U.S.? Because all of the stuff that we do is all online. So that's, so probably the answer to your question is no. Uh, Sync 3 GPS. So that was built into the car, was it, Tommy? Uh, Ra 
Bob, any new tips for people coming to truck driving? Yes, do your research. Uh, Ryan, how are you? Uh, Rob, yeah, any tips for people coming to truck driving? Now, Rob, are you embarking on going to driving school? Uh, just let me know what stage you're at uh, of entering a career as a, as a truck driver. I'll be able to give you better advice that's sort of fine-tuned to that, okay? So everybody's here. It looks like we're uh, getting set up here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get started on the presentation and uh, talk to you a little bit about that. And uh, so we'll just switch over to that and Corey will remind me, I'm certain. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Corey is the one in blue. Corey is moderating. So uh, if you have any questions or I refer you to a video, Corey is really good at uh, going and getting the video for you. So that's really good in getting you the reference. Ashmer, driveway reverse parking backing into your driveway. Okay, Ashmer, one of the things that uh, helps with backing up straight is to, especially when you're in your driveway, because it's the same all the time, right? You want to figure out where the landmarks are in your driveway. And as well, every couple of times that you're backing up, take a moment, stop the vehicle, pause, and look out the front of the windshield. And that will give you a reference point of whether the vehicle is straight or not. Okay, so once you figure out where the landmarks are in the driveway, that's one thing that's going to help you keep the vehicle straight. The other thing is, is looking forward out the front windshield. That's going to help you keep the vehicle straight as well. And for those, the rest of you who are going for uh, a license uh, and you're parking the vehicle, always pause, stop the vehicle, and uh, look out the front windshield. It's always not looking out the back, but looking out the front that will help you to keep the vehicle straight. Okay. Rob, got my CDL going to Prime Inc. this Tuesday. Now, Rob, does Prime have a, a mentoring program? Is that what you're doing there? Okay. Okay, uh, do, don't use your name. Flash is given by trucks. They flash like a sequence of lights when you make spaces for them. How do you? How do they do that? There is a special lever or button. Okay, don't use your name. Uh, sometimes they'll use the four-way flashers, and if they flash the four-way flashers three times, that's the thank you. Also, on some of the trucks, the Peterbilts, they have a switch that will actually flash the, the uh, clearance light. So it's it's kind of a dead man switch. you got to hold it down. So you just hold it down a couple, two, three times, and it flashes all the clearance lights on the truck. And it's just one of those things that comes with the truck. Uh, <laughs> yes, don't use your name. They are much, much better when Corey's here, that's for sure. <laughs> we, we don't get hijacked. <laughs> <laughs> so we do thank Corey for his work. Okay, so Nick has heard good news about Prime, so that's really great. Yes, uh, don't use her name. Yeah, it's it's the Peterbilt. There's a switch in the Peterbilt truck that you just flip it down a couple of times. Rob, you're going to be doing 40,000 miles with a trainer. That Yeah, no, Rob, that's really the best way to go. If you can work with a mentor at the beginning of your truck driving career, that is really going to set you up to be successful because, uh, unfortunately, a lot of drivers really get just kind of thrown into the deep end and they're left to figure out, uh, you know, logbooks, they figure out trip planning, route planning, all those types of things. And I'm going to show you a couple of videos here for route planning and, the, and that'll help you out too once you get started. But there's just... People don't realize how much work there is at the beginning of being a truck driver. Now, I mean, not to mention the fact that you're trying to figure out how to drive the truck, too, and all of the other pieces and bits that come with it. And it really takes you, you know, six, eight months before you start getting comfortable with all that stuff. You know, just watch the video on my friend Bill and, you know, going into the oil field to learn how to drive. So there's that part as well. Uh, Sebastian, uh, what to do if you think you're being... Okay, car inspectors. Sebastian, what are you talking about when you're talking about car inspectors? Are you talking about a new car that you have to get inspected uh, for it to pass the safety? Okay. Uh, given, uh, this is a QA, and a it is a question and answer. And uh, what I just do a bit of a presentation here, about 10 or 15 minutes, and then most of the time that I'm here, I answer questions for you. So if you have any questions about getting a license, regard any class, I'll be more than happy to answer that for you. And Dave just <laughs> said that to you, that yes, this is live. It is a question and answer. I will answer your questions for you. Uh, okay, Dave, yes. Uh, and as well, Dave, 
There is a sign, there is a video here specifically on interstates in the United States. It's very specific to that. But I will give you a bit more information about navigating freeways and interstates both in Canada and the United States here. Okay, Sebastian, are, so what's going on, Sebastian? Are you having difficulty with uh, somebody inspecting your vehicle? Now, one of the things I will say before you answer me on that, Sebastian, is if you, you have to go back to the same inspector because if you go to different inspectors, unfortunately, different inspectors are going to give you different information. And I have had that experience in the past of trying to get a vehicle inspected where I took it to one place, got a list of repairs that needed to be done in, in order for that vehicle to pass an inspection. And then, you know, because I was young and didn't know, I took it to a different mechanic to have it inspected and they give me a different list of things to do so make sure you take so one thing you want to do when you get a vehicle inspected is take it back to the same person all the time and then that way you're going to get a comprehensive list of uh what needs to be fixed and whatnot okay yes dave that's what i'm going to do okay i'm going to give you some general information and then i'm going to do another video on for Wednesday that I'm specifically going to go out in the car and I'm going to hook the phone up and I'm going to do I'm going to do some route planning on G, on Google Maps and then I'm going to go out in the car with the phone and I'm going to show you how to do that. <laughs> Thanks so much Rob, I appreciate that. Panas is here and I'm going to really try to pronounce your name correctly tonight because that was most embarrassing when I made that mistake. <laughs> and it's nice to see you Panas. Thanks so much. All right, so we're going to get over to the video presentation here. Let me just get this going here. All right, here we go. So, route planning and navigation. And the first thing I'm going to say about route planning and navigation is not to be lumped in as one thing. These are two things. Now, just a minute, I'll get my face up here in the corner for you. Uh, one's, just bear with me one sec. My mouse is not cooperating. There we go. All right, so there I am. So route planning and navigation are two different things. Route planning is the thing that you do before you go out and start driving your vehicle to the unknown destination and navigation is what you do to get your vehicle to that destination and those are two separate things. So we're gonna talk a little bit more in detail about those two things. Click on the PowerPoint presentation and for those of you who are new here, I'm Rick August. I do have a PhD in legal history and for those of you who don't know what legal history it is, it's the study of policing, courts and prisons and my expertise is in policing as it relates to traffic. I was a truck driver for most of the 1990s. Uh, some most of five years full-time and then uh, some part-time stuff as well and in 1997 I became a licensed driving instructor I've been a licensed driving instructor for the better part of 20 years both in Ontario British Columbia Canada and also I qualified as a driving instructor in Australia in the state of Victoria but I never actually worked as a driving instructor I worked as a bus driver for Greyhound while I was in Australia and I did my doctorate in at the University of Melbourne while I was in Australia and uh, I drove Greyhound bus there and I also drove for V-Line which is a regional uh, bus driving company there. So those are my qualifications of being a driving instructor and having the Smart Drive Test channel. Uh, for those of you who may not have seen the uh, new video that was put up on Saturday, Parallel Parking Between Cones, I had some requests for this. Unfortunately some of them were older requests and uh, I finally got that video up and done for you. For those of you who are going to, for, to a test center uh, to parallel park between cones because sometimes they're going to do this in a closed circuit area and if you don't know where the test center that you're going to be taking your road test at just call go down to the DMV or the local authority that's going to be testing you here in British Columbia it's ICBC in Ontario it's the MTO and ask them if they park between cones in a closed circuit area or just call a local driving school and they'll be able to tell you that as well over on the uh, smart drive test YouTube channel there's a whole playlist on parallel parking so I've done separate videos on parallel parking behind one car between cars the variables of parallel parking and then this one on cones so there's, that's the new stuff this week so fundamental driving skills as I said uh, during the question and answer there at the beginning 
navigation and route planning has changed a lot uh, in the last 15 or 20 years with the widespread use of GPS. We all have GPS in our phones and uh, Google Maps is just a fantastic thing, especially if you're gonna walk, you're gonna ride your bicycle, <laughs> you're going to take the local transit. Uh, if Some of you may or may not know that you can plug a route into Google Maps and you can click on transit and it'll tell you when the bus is there or and you can click in the option of when you need to be at the destination, say at 4 p.m. in the afternoon, it'll give you the exact bus routes that you need to take in any metropolitan area in the world, pretty much about uh, transits. I, I haven't tested that in Europe and whatnot, but I suspect it's the same because uh, Google is very informative in terms of giving you good information. And uh, I'll tell you, uh, a couple of years ago, I went back driving truck and had access to GPS and it was a completely different exercise uh, in learning how to drive as opposed to back when I drove when we just had a map book and, and a phone and you had to call people for directions. It was a real skill in navigating, especially when you had a 75 foot vehicle and you can't just turn around in somebody's driveway. For the CDL drivers are here and who are starting a career as a bus or truck driver, there are two videos here on the Smart Drive Test YouTube channel on route planning and trip planning. Uh, one is for the United States and the other one is for Canada. And this is a much more specialized skill for CDL drivers because the trip planning and route planning has to be in compliance with your hours of service. In other words, it has to be in, uh, in keeping with your logbook hours. And for those of you driving in the States, you're allowed to drive 11 hours in a 24 hour period. And in Canada, it's 13 hours in a 24 hour period. And all of that information, have a look at that uh, if you want a comprehensive course. I have logbook courses for both the United States and for Canada over at the website and uh, you can head over there and pick those up as well. For about 25 bucks you can take the logbook courses and part of those logbook courses is both fatigue management and trip planning and route planning and shows you how to do that step by step and as well gives you exercises uh, that will show you how to route plan and how to log this in a logbook and how to fill out the logbook sheet. So all of that is really good and that information is there in a much more in-depth than what it will be for passenger vehicles. All right, so the route planning part, as I said in the introduction, route planning and navigation are two separate pieces. So the first part that you need to do is you need to plan the route. And what you're looking for when you're planning the route and you go to Google Maps and you plug this in, so you plug in the address of where you're starting at, which is usually gonna be your house, or if, say for example, you're driving from one city to another, you're just gonna put in your city because you know how to get out of your city and out onto the main road, and then you're gonna plug to the specific address of where you're going. And you're gonna put this into Google Maps and you're gonna take note of where the major routes are. And one of the, the uh, exercises I'll caution you on is, is that you can get a detailed list on Google Maps of every street and how far you gotta drive. Don't just print it out and take it with you because it's really tough to drive a vehicle and read that list at the same time. You need to write it out in your own uh, handwriting on a piece of paper and have notations for short forms. So for example, railway crossings, you just put RR. Uh, N with a circle around it is north, N uh, south with a circle around it. Uh, traffic lights and uh, major landmarks and those types of things. So. This is what you're doing when you're looking for the route and you're planning it before you go. And you wanna get some of that information in your head. So I'm gonna turn left at Smith Street and on the corner of Smith Street is a McDonald's and you're looking for that landmark. And that's what it says down here at the bottom point is, is that you're identifying landmarks. Now, if you don't get all of the information that you're looking for from Google Maps, the other thing that you can do is you can always call the people at the destination. And this is one of the key things for truck drivers if you're gonna call uh, a place that you're delivering to, when you get on the phone and you're talking to them, always ask to talk to shipping. <laughs> because in my experience of calling places that are gonna give you directions to get to where you need to go, uh, the people at the front counter who answer the phone, I, I sometimes think that they pop up out of the ground in the morning at work. They don't actually drive there because they don't take note of actually where they're going. So shippers, are always giving directions to people who need to get to where they're go with where they're at so they're able to give you directions okay so always when you call to get directions always ask for shipping or try and get the best person that you can to give you directions because your people who are going to give you directions are going to give you interesting directions you know go down to the walnut tree at the bottom of the hill and turn right and you know 
uh, you know, at the old abandoned building, don't turn there because then you've got, you know, you're not far enough. You need to go, if you go to, you know, McDonald's, you've gone too far sort of thing. You want to try and make the um, directions as simple as possible without being too confusing. And that's essentially part of your route planning. All right, so navigation, as I said, make sure you write it out in your own handwriting of where you're going to go and what your major landmarks are and what the major roads and those types of things are so you know all of that information and some of it's in your head because the process of writing it out will actually get will help you to memorize some of it if you have passengers in the vehicle with you they can help you to do it when uh the first time excuse me the first time i drove into sydney australia i had it all mapped out I had it all written out in my own handwriting I had maps printed out and I gave it to one of the passengers in the front seat of the bus and I said here you need to help me navigate into Sydney Australia to the to the bus terminal and people were more than happy to do that it will help you to be able to concentrate on driving okay now the other thing about doing your route planning is is that you say you're going to turn left at Smith Street well you know that two blocks before Smith Street uh, two blocks before Smith Street, you're going to find 28th Avenue, and you know that two blocks from 28th Avenue, you're going to turn left, and that will allow you to get in the appropriate lane before you actually get to the intersection. So that's one of the things that you're going to do. Now, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, if you're in a residential area or you're in an industrial area, and you're driving slowly and you're looking for an address and you can't find it, Activate your four-way flashers on your vehicle to indicate to other traffic that you're driving slowly and you don't know where you're going because you're looking for a specific address. And for the CDL drivers who are navigating to some place, know that your GPS isn't always going to give you the specific location, right? It might be three, three doors up or whatnot. So make sure that you're looking around and getting the numbers off the building so that you can find the appropriate place. As well, for CDL drivers, sometimes you might just have to stop on the road and walk into the place if you don't know where it is. And lastly, if you are in doubt about where you're going and you are lost, just stop the vehicle and figure out where you're going and have a look at the map, reconfigure things, and figure out whether you need to go back or whatnot. And we all have cell phones in this day and age. So the other thing that you can do is, is that you can just call the number and ask them for directions and say, listen, this is where I am. Uh, can you give me directions? I think I'm lost. Okay, so those types of things. All right, road signs. Now, when you're navigating in an unfamiliar place, road signs are going to be paramount. These are going to communicate information about the changing roadway because you're not going to know that there's a bottleneck on the roadway up, so you need to pay attention to the roadway. As well, they're gonna give you clues along the roadway. If you're going to the airport, there's gonna be signs to the airport. It was like a few years ago, we were going down to BC Ferries. Well, I'd never been to BC Ferries before. I was going with a friend of mine, and she said, well, I don't know how we're gonna find it. And I said, well, lots of people <laughs> every day, hundreds and thousands of people make their way to BC Ferries. There has to be lots of signs, and there were lots of signs. It was well signed to get to BC Ferries, so pay attention to the road signs. And I know for most passenger vehicle, drivers unfortunately they don't really pay as as much attention as they should to road signs so as i said when you're in an unfamiliar area look for the road signs and as well look for destination signs if you're driving to another city destination signs will will help you to figure out how far away you are if you're in ontario and it's 350 kilometers you know you're three and a half hours away you might as well take a break because you need to take you should take a break every couple hours if you're in the states and you're 120 miles away and you're doing 60 miles an hour on the freeway you know you're two hours away so that uh those destination boards are imperative in terms of navigating and finding your way around and for cdl drivers you have to give dispatch an eta how far away are you so destination signs will allow you to be able to do that and figure that out okay and the key component of navigating successfully and navigating better especially as you graduate to bigger and bigger vehicles that you can't just turn around in somebody's driveway are mile markers and mile markers will give you specific information about physical locations 111b and 111a these are exits on this freeway and when you look at google maps when you're getting off a freeway or you're getting off an interstate or a motorway or wherever you are in the world look for the exit number now in most states in the u.s 
everyone except New York, which, uh, you know, has, is, it, the Empire State is special in and of itself. It has a few quirks in terms of driving. In most other states in the U.S., the, the exit numbers line up with the mile markers. They don't in uh, New York. However, when you're taking note on Google Maps and you're figuring out your route planning, take note of the mile marker. Now, the other piece is, is that the mile markers are also defensive driving. And here's a key lesson I was with a student coming out of Kamloops one day and we got on the high, back onto the main highway, the Trans-Canada Highway at 168 and I think we were going to 177 and we're going up the big hill there in Kamloops and there was a set of Super Bs which is a much bigger truck that was loaded and going a lot slower and, he, and the student said to me, well can I pass? And I said, well, you just got on at 168 and you're going to 177. So how far is it from 168 to 177? Well, he didn't know that they were mile markers and we had nine kilometers to go up the road before we got to where we were going to get off the highway. So in nine kilometers, he had lots of room to pass that truck. So he, so the mile markers will also give you distances and allow you to be more defensive because you don't want to be stuck out in the other lane if you've only got half a, half a kilometer because you can't get out there and then get back to your exit to get off the road. All right, mile markers and destination signs will reduce angst and tension because you know, okay, three kilometers up the road is my exit and I need to get off the road at three kilometers up the road. The other piece about it is, is it reduces confusion because an experience of mine when I was driving in Florida and uh, the directions I got were get off at Smythe exit. Well, I got off at Smythe exit in Florida and I ended up in the middle of a swamp. The Smythe exit that I was looking for was 50 miles down the interstate. There were two Smythe exits. I needed a different exit number. So they give you specific information in both the United States and in Canada. Most major freeways and interstates will have mile markers and they will really, really help you to navigate and to be defensive and reduce stress and anxiety while you're driving. Okay, orienteering. Uh, this is a bit advanced, but this is something that if you're going to be driving on highways and freeways, you want to know south, east, west, and north. And if you figure out north, you can figure out the other three points on the compass because west and east always spell we. <laughs> and for example, here in Vernon, British Columbia, we have a mountain on the east and we have a mountain on the west. So if you're driving in a north or south direction, you're going to have a mountain on your right and you're going to have a mountain on the left and you know that you're either going north or south. So it can give you a real sense of where you're going, especially if you have large physical landmarks like we do here in Vernon, British Columbia. As well, if you know the directions north, west, south, and east, you can get a sense of the major roads in, an, in a new city. So, for example, when I was in Melbourne, Australia, I could get a sense of the layout of the city, and I knew that the city wrapped itself around Port Phillip Bay, and most of the time, if you were at the bay, you were going to go uphill in a northerly direction away from the bay. So, it's always good to be able to know north, east, west, and south, and if you end up in Quebec City or in Montreal, uh, uh, nord, sud, est, and west uh, are the directions and you can find yourself getting around fairly simply if you know the directions on the compass and it's also going to correspond to your GPS. Alright, so I did talk about shorthand and writing it out yourself uh, for your directions. Uh, one of the other things that you want to do is ask three people for directions. Uh, if you ever read the book or saw the movie The Bridges of Madison County, uh, <laughs> the main character says that at the beginning of the book. He says you always have to ask three people for directions. And I always say that you need to consult two, maybe three sources to get good directions about where you're going to go. And what I say is Google Maps is going to be one of those. And then your phone is going to be the second one. And then if you're in the least bit of doubt, call the destination where you're going and get directions from them and when you call the person, if you are going to get it on the phone and you're going to call the person, know where you're coming from. For example, if you're coming into Vernon, British Columbia, you say, listen, I'm coming from the south on Highway 97. Uh, if you're going into to Toledo, Ohio, say, I'm coming from Michigan and I'm heading southbound on I-75. And then that way they'll know where to get you from uh, once you're on the interstate. They can say, listen, get off at exit uh, 210 and head west on State Road 12, okay, just as an example. And then if you do call somebody, go back to the map and consult the map and see if the directions that they gave you 
jive up with the map and again that will help you to navigate once you start navigating to these unknown locations and those types of things and again your landmarks are going to be key in terms of navigating and route planning when you're driving all right so that's the last of that good luck in your road test and remember pick the best answer not necessarily the right answer and if you're in the least bit of doubt when you're navigating stop the vehicle and check again and phone if you have to all right so we'll just come back and answer any questions that people have video capture make that bigger just bear with me for one sec All right, there we go. Yeah, Matt, that's really good that you just write stuff out in your own handwriting because that really helps to get it into your own head. So that's what you want to do because uh, you need to you need to have some of it memorized you need to know for example that I'm gonna turn left at the McDonald's or I'm gonna turn right at the Walmart or you know I'm gonna go across the railway crossing and then I'm gonna go three four blocks I'll call it railroad we call it railroad in North America <laughs> okay all right uh, Thank you, Dave. Uh, so if you have any questions at all about route planning and navigation, and I know that for uh, some new drivers, they have a bit of trepidation and a bit of anxiety about navigation, uh, especially when they're trying to find new locations and those types of things. It's just a matter of doing a bit of homework before you take off with Google Maps. Uh, and if you don't have access to a computer at home, you can always go to the library and those types of things. Uh, then, uh, you know that will really reduce a lot of stress and anxiety especially if you're driving an RV or you're driving a straight truck or you're driving a tractor trailer and those types of things it's really going to help you out okay Matt uh, did I ever drive truck in Quebec yes I did drive truck in Quebec uh, no actually Matt I didn't have a great deal of trouble finding uh, you know because most of the signs have symbols on them and uh, there's some unique symbols for the way scales and those types of things but uh, it's pretty easy to figure stuff out and again like I said it's est, sud, nord and west and uh, <laughs> uh, Pont Champlain is uh, Pont is bridge so it's the Champlain bridge uh, the Cary tunnel uh, it's pretty simple and I mean all the major routes are numbered uh, the 20 the 40 and you know you just follow those routes around and it's uh, pretty simple and you know you just learn the four directions and you can get yourself around pretty pretty easily and you know if you try to use a little bit of French uh, they really appreciate it there and if you do that they'll really help you out and what whatnot so <laughs> well we're glad we could help you out Rob and get you going here and I do really encourage you Rob if you haven't seen the trip planning video there uh, already then definitely have a look at that and you might want to consider buying the logbook course because the logbook course gives you specific routes and I think there's if I remember correctly there's two routes there's one into LA and up to Las Vegas and then back to Arizona and it you have to plan it and you have to do the route planning and you have to figure out fuel and those types of things as well and there's another one uh, yeah there's another one in Montana that I do uh, for the United States as well so there's a couple of really good exercises there and like I said if you if you purchase any of my courses you have complete access to me you can ask me any questions and I'll make sure that you're successful and help you with those as well uh, no Sebastian uh, now Sebastian I just asked you are you talking about for being a CDL driver because I don't I don't recommend that you drive 30 11 hours straight <laughs> that's that's a lot okay yeah Okay, yes, some people do trace them out on a map in a yellow marker, Dave, but that doesn't help you out. I think when you actually write it out on a piece of paper in, in bigger than normal text, because you gotta remember, you gotta glance at that and try and read it while you're driving, 
and it's pretty hard to do that and I mean it's you know it's just easier to write it out because then you can say okay over the railway crossings I go two blocks and then I turn left at the traffic light and it's you can get a lot of detail from Google Maps if you zoom in right and not only that uh, on Google Maps you can look at Street View as well and you can see exactly what's at that intersection and pick out the landmarks that will help you to navigate. I mean, Google Maps is incredible in terms of the sheer amount of information that you can get from it that will help you to navigate around and those types of things. And when I went back driving truck, I went to Prince George, British Columbia. Well, I'd never been in Prince George before in my life. I had five drops there. And from the time that I drove in the 1990s to the time that I drove in 2015, I mean, we're, we're talking 20 years. Uh, when I drove, it was a lot of work <laughs> navigating and you had to get a lot of information from people on the phone and uh, you really had to have your wits about you. So, uh, you know, it was just so much easier with GPS and, and, you know, directions being talked to you on the phone and those types of things. So, Okay, Sebastian. So what I suggest to you, Sebastian, if you're driving your personal vehicle, uh, I suggest you take a break every couple hours in your in your passenger vehicle. I mean, especially if you're in the States, there's lots of rest areas and those types of places to get into. And, uh, you know, just get out of the car and walk around because it's, it's hard on you. Uh, I mean, I can go for a lot longer in a big truck than I can go for in my personal vehicle. But in my personal vehicle, I mean, you just got to get out and you want to have a drink and, you know... You just need to keep the blood flowing and those types of things. And the other thing, Sebastian, that I will caution you about in terms of driving your personal vehicle is, is that we all have a biological clock and we tend to lean towards fatigue at sort of one to five in the afternoon and one to five in the morning. So be careful during those times of the day that you're gonna kind of nod off and you're gonna kind of drift off a little bit and you're gonna be tired. So those are the kinds of days that you want to get out of the vehicle and you want to go for a little walk and you want to get the blood pumping in your, in your body and those types of things so that you can stay awake and whatnot. So just, I really, when you're on a big trip, big road trip like that, I really do suggest that you uh, take a break every couple hours, get into the rest area, go use the toilet, walk around the vehicle and those types of things. All right. So another quiet night. <laughs> Uh, uh, nope, Dave, uh, you got the first part right. So in the United States, odd numbers go north-south on interstates. Even numbers go east-west. <laughs> and now you're going to make me say this. Triple digits are a ring road around a city. So 495 is the ring road around Atlanta, Georgia. Or they are a spur road. So in Washington, D.C., if you look at the map in Washington, D.C., from the ring road, there's a spur road that just goes into downtown and it terminates. It goes off the ring road into there. Or you have a circumferential. <laughs> look, I said that without screwing it up. Circumferential road, which is the main interstate, and then just a half loop off the interstate. Those are what the three-digit numbers will mean. And there's uh, even in odd numbers also that will give you some information about that as well. But have a look at the video here on interstates on the channel and that will explain all of that in more detail for you. But just recap, odd numbers north-south, even numbers east-west and they start at low numbers in the south and go to high numbers in the north and they start in uh, high numbers in the east and go to low numbers in the west in terms of interstates. And the reason for that is so that they don't uh, it's not confused with state roads in the US. Okay? Sebastian, would you recommend if Sebastian, if you're tired, then I would recommend that you put the seat back and have a nap in your car. Uh, I have done that on numerous occasions, put the seat back in my vehicle and slept in my vehicle. Uh, if you need a few minutes of kip, sometimes that's going to keep you safe on the roadway. So yes, I would recommend that. <laughs> and as Matt has said here, he slept in his car as many a times. And as well, Sebastian, if you're traveling through winter areas in when it's cold and when there's snow and ice and those types of things, as well, make sure that you have an emergency kit in your vehicle in case something happens, you end up in the ditch and whatnot, you got a bit of food in the car and whatnot. And there's a video here on the channel as well on survival kits for your car. So have that as well. 
okay and uh, no no fair enough Sebastian we've all been there where we can't afford hotels but uh, you know do have some pillows and blankets in your vehicle on long road trips and those types of things and have lots of food and the other thing just to reduce distractions while you're on long trips uh, Sebastian uh, you know have all your music out have a cooler of food have your drinks out and those types of things and uh, you know part of the thing with uh, with your route planning is is that you can figure out where your stops are right you can stop at places that are interesting you can go for a walk at local amusements and those types of things or they have the Walmart there or if you're going to here in Edmonton we have the West Edmonton Mall which has an amusement park in it and those types of things so you so part of your route planning on your bigger trip is you can plan the places that you're going to stop and those types of things okay yes Yes, Dave, they do. And that's really good information in terms of New England, in terms of the destination signs and whatnot. And they're really good for navigation. <laughs> During the spring. Hi, Samantha, how are you? How are things going in your world? Uh, yes, Matt, definitely. Now, just remind me, Matt, are you driving, are you driving a big truck? Is that what you're doing? Are you driving CDL? Oh, you've got snow in Colorado. We've got snow here in Vernon too, Samantha. It's it is. It went down to minus fourteen degrees Celsius last night, and I'll just I'll just have a look here on me. Uh, minus fourteen is seven degrees Fahrenheit. So yes, it was fairly cold here. So Tommy, yes, the 401 East and West both, yeah, they have lots of rest areas and most of those rest areas, Tommy, you may or may not know, are approximately a two hour drive away from each other. And the, the reason for that is because we know that when we're driving, when passenger vehicles are driving, that it's about two hours, that's when you st stop, um, that's when you start getting tired, that's when you start getting f fatigue and those types of things. Oh, okay, so you don't, all right. Uh, that is awesome, Samantha. You got accepted to college. Where, Samantha, where are you going to college? That is that is just awesome. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay. You didn't get any snow until now. Uh, well, we have lots here in Vernon. You can have some of ours. Okay, Dave. Uh, oh my God, 70s on the East Coast next week. That's crazy. That is crazy. Okay, and Corey has put up the video on the survival kit for your vehicle. So if you're driving in the winter time, definitely have a survival kit in your vehicle. And as well, one of the key components or the key ingredients for a survival kit, uh, if you have any medication that you're taking, make sure that uh, you have that prescription medication in your kit as well. And as well, uh, you know, have a pot and a candle because the candle will warm the inside. Don't let your vehicle run below a quarter tank of fuel and uh, you don't have a blanket and uh, don't run your vehicle for a long time. And, and you know, if it's snowing and blowing out and you ended up in the ditch because of bad weather, don't leave your vehicle. Stay in your vehicle because it acts as shelter. Somebody will come and get you, okay? It's more dangerous to try and walk somewhere than it is to stay in your vehicle. Oh, okay. So, Matt, you weren't successful at that. No, that's unfortunate. Okay. Yeah, that's another thing that you can do, Dave. If you've got more than one or two people in the vehicle who are able to drive, you can just switch off. That helps as well. And then, you know, while you're driving, one of the people in the vehicle can rest and uh, get some sleep and then carry on and those types of things. I did that when I first drive, started driving truck. We were running team and one person would sleep and one person would drive. And uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that for CDL driving. All right, so uh, that's pretty much it for the presentation. And if anybody else has any questions, we'd be more than happy to answer those. Uh, I'm just going to go over quickly one of the courses that I have for sale, the Pass Your Road Test First Time course over on the website. And I'll just quickly go over that and make an offer for you. And if you're going for a road test first time, for those of you on the replay and those types of things, uh, definitely head over there and purchase that. All right, so Pass Your Road Test is a, is a course for new drivers, regardless of class. It's for learners and for 
Uh, the practical test, and it's guaranteed to pass first time. If you don't pass within 60 days and complete the course, I'll give you your money back. So there's a glossary of terms. There's lots of terminology for new drivers. Uh, passing a road test that you need to be familiar with for the purposes of learning how to drive and being successful is that. Uh, lesson one goes over the primary and secondary controls of the vehicle. All of the uh, lessons have uh, learning objectives, what you will learn by the end of the lesson, and as well they have review quest, uh, quizzes to make sure that you uh, know the information that is presented in that lesson. Lesson two is maneuvers required for the road test, two point reverse turn, three, three point turn, parallel parking between cones, parallel parking between behind other vehicles. Again, review quiz, rules of the road, and right of way. And uh, lesson four is uh, right turns, left turns, merging, and getting out onto a highway. Lesson five is a mock road test and tips that you, uh, for specific maneuvers that you need to do to be successful on a road test. And then finally, lesson six is road test do's, things that you absolutely need to do on a road test to be successful. All right, there's also a toolkit in the uh, Passion Road Test First Time course. The schedule for training is an approximately a six week course and you can do all of the training that you need to do in the six weeks. There's a guide for mentors, for people that are going to help you to drive and that will give them information to help you be successful and to help you learn because there's a difference when you're training somebody uh, to pass a road test as opposed to just teaching them how to drive. There's also a checklist for the day of your license, things that you need to do. Another checklist for your pre-trip inspection of your vehicle if you're taking your personal vehicle. And if you are taking a driving school vehicle, you also wanna make sure that there's been a pre-trip inspection because you don't wanna be denied uh, taking your road test because there's something wrong with the vehicle. For example, you have a brake light out or whatnot or the seatbelt on the passenger side doesn't work. Because if those things do not work, you can't go out on your road test. So don't be denied because of something simple that could be fixed on your vehicle before you show up for your road test. Uh, winter driving checklist and a trailering checklist. These are bonuses that are included in the price of the course. Okay, and there are practice driving test questions. Uh, for those of you taking a theory test, and all of these have uh, 40 practice test questions, and there's three pr uh, questions. All of the questions have feedback, and you will earn a certificate from this course. And it goes over the basics of learning to drive, vehicle controls, right of way, road signs and their meetings, skills and abilities to pass your road test. And as I've said, the basics of any road test, regardless of class, whether it's car, truck, or bus, speed management, space management, observation, and communication are the four fundamental components of any road test. So included in the course is the course, which is approximately, which is $38, the glossary, which is another $90, uh, the toolkit costs $110 and practice driving test questions are $30 for a total of $268, but I'm not going to sell it to you for $268. Uh, the regular price of the course is $38. If you head over now and type in the coupon code YouTube30, you'll pick up the course for $26.60, which is half the cost of what it would cost to retake your road test if you were unsuccessful and <laughs> none of us want to fail a road test and showed up to school the next day and tell your friends that you didn't pass your road test as well the bonuses in the course are how to drive a manual car all of the instructions and lessons are there for that and as well trailering how to trailer a, uh, pulling a recreational trailer whether it's a boat trailer if you're going down to the beach uh, utility trailers if you're trying to clean up your backyard and those types of things or recreational trailers you want to go camping and then there's information on winter driving and all of that is included in the course and is a bonus of approximately $78 uh, added to all of the stuff that you're going to get in the course so lots of great information look down in the description box there you'll find the link for the course and you can pick that course up as I said you'll get a 30% off coupon on the course and be successful on your road test first time and as I said it's guaranteed 60 days pass a road test or you get your money back I'll refund your money if you're not successful first time on your road test there we go and I'll just come back here so there we go and Corey's put the link up there for anybody that might be interested and the coupon code as well
Uh, you can, Dave. You can ride a motorcycle from Toronto to Orlando, Florida. You just need <laughs> you need a motorcycle license, and uh, you can do that. It's a long ride. Uh, you may or may not know, Dave, that it's the same distance from Toronto, Ontario to Orlando, Florida as it is from Toronto to Thunder Bay, Ontario. So it is a long ways. And uh, motocross bikes are more for off-road and recreation. Yeah, unless you're riding an enduro, which is a cross cross bike. It's partly motorcycle. It's a dirt bike and road bike. Yeah, most motorbikes are going to go faster than cars. <laughs> Sebastian, that's great. I'm really glad that we could help you out. And if you have any questions, by all means, uh, leave us a comment. Uh, send me an email, rick at smartdrivetest.com. Be more than happy to help you out. Uh, if you like what you see here, if you're watching on the replay, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and make sure you subscribe to the channel and always happy to help people out. Okay. Dave, no, you cannot drive one day at 80 miles an hour to Florida. <laughs> uh, Dave, it's a 24-hour drive to Florida from Toronto, so you can't do it at 80 miles an hour. <sighs> okay. Eli, how are you? Dave, the course is pricey. $26.60. I think that's good value for money. <laughs> I know, actually, I know it's good money for, mo for good value for money. Uh, oh, that's a great resource. Thanks, thanks for sharing that, Eli. Uh, Dave McLean, <laughs> how long do you think it would take that distance at eighty miles an hour? Uh, probably about eighteen hours, I suspect. However, uh, know that you're going to get a speeding ticket at that distance. You, it's it's going to be pushing it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I would recommend that. All right. So if anybody has any questions, by all means, uh, leave me a comment down in the comment section. Drop me an email. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Uh, congratulations to everybody who has passed the road test in the last week. And good luck to everybody who's taking a road test in the upcoming week. Oh, Dave, no, 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 $78. That was the bonus in the course. The course is only $26.60 with the coupon. That's what you're going to pick the course up for. And it's guaranteed pass your road test first time. So if you don't pass within six weeks and you, you did complete the course, $26.60, that's the cost of the course, okay? Thank you for uh, asking that because uh, if you had that confusion, Dave, then other people as well had that confusion. So no, the course wasn't $78. So... What that tells me is, is I need to put another slide up to re, uh, reiterate that the, the cost of the course is twenty six sixty, not seventy eight dollars. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate that. So, okay, and uh, yeah, I wouldn't recommend driving to Florida at eighty miles an hour. <laughs> okay, so good luck in your road test, and remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.